What if you could change the rules to the game so that you could always win? We're going to talk about it on today's podcast. I've spent the last 20 years studying, teaching, and coaching people to find their greatness and take their lives to the next level. Along the way, it's become evident that emotions are at the root of everybody's successes and failures. Worry and fear are the enemies, and it's time to forge the armor and earn the tools to overcome the two things that could single-handedly destroy your future. Hi, my name is Michael Johnson, and I'm a life coach, a peak performance trainer, and I'm the emotions guy. It's time to take back control, control of how you feel, control of how you act, and control of how you experience life. It's time to become a lifer, a new breed of overachiever focused on living every minute to its fullest. We are responsible for how we feel, and no one and no thing can make us feel anything. Emotional mastery is our journey, and emotional education and intelligence is the key. We are lifers, and this is Magic for Life. What's up, lifers? Michael Johnson here with the Magic for Life podcast, and I'm excited that you joined me today because we're going to talk about those times when you've played a game and somebody changed the rules on you midway through. I was reminded of this recently when I got uh, into play backgammon with one of my daughters. <clears throat> and as we got in, they didn't know how to play. So I was teaching them the rules of the game and getting them used to, uh, you know, how it functioned. Now, the challenge with any new game is that oftentimes you have to play it once and you can get the general rules of the game, but you have to start playing it so that you can remember all the rules because remembering them all ahead of time and the circumstances that they come up in is huge, right? Now, if you haven't played backgammon before, it's a pretty cool game. It's this combination of risk and strategy and sort of being able to deal with the punches as they come because you're dealing with dice. You don't know what they're going to roll or how they're going to roll. And you'd like to think that you can manipulate it, you know, and it's kind of fun. So you're dealing with risk mitigation and you're dealing with uh, being able to get the roles that you need and strategy in comparison to what the other person is doing. So it's a, a super fun game. You should try it out sometime. But I was teaching my daughter and of course, there's a lot of little rules along the way that it's hard to remember in the beginning. And when you're playing with a younger person, you don't want to overwhelm them with rules. So you basically say, hey, you know what? Let's just start playing and I'll teach you the rules as we go. Now, one of the fun rules that, that comes up is when you're rolling the dice, if you roll doubles, you get actually four turns. You get two or one for each, or sorry, two for each of the dice. So if you roll double two or double threes, let's say, then you get uh, one, three, two, threes, three, threes, four, threes, instead of just the two dice that you normally get. And when you don't know this rule at first, if you're the one that rolls doubles, the other person's like, wait a second, did you make that up so that you could do better? Now, here's the thing. It's part of the rules of the game, but when you don't know the rules to the game, sometimes it's hard to actually win at the game. Right, And so you, you have to learn the rules of the game. Well, this is a lot like life. As you're moving through and you're dealing with life, oftentimes you're going along and you go, wait a second, you can, you can do that in life? Nobody told me that. Is that allowed? Wait a second. And so you're going through. And as you go through your life, you start learning more and more of the rules of the game. Now, the interesting thing about rules is that some of them are made for us and some of them we make up. Now, if you look at something like natural law, uh, you can go back and study this all the way back to the great philosophers of the day, right? And they talk about natural law. Now, natural law is intrinsic values that govern our reasoning. Things like, uh, things that would fit into natural law are things like you shouldn't kill somebody, right? Because we know this innately. We know naturally that it's not good to kill somebody. And we know that that's indeed the case. That's a natural law, right? But there are things like you should stop at a red light. Well, that's not natural law, but it's a law that we all made up to keep each other safe. Because if we all went flying through the intersections, no telling who would get hurt and ultimately lead to 
maybe killing somebody. So this idea that we stop at red lights is an agreed upon law. It's one of the laws that we need to have a license for. So we go and we study, we get this license and we go, yeah, I agree to stop at all of the red lights. I agree to stop at all of the stoplights. I agree to stop um, and yield when I see a yield sign and make sure nobody's coming and then I'll go second. Right? And that's like a roundabout. So we agree to these rules, to these laws, so to speak. And so as we move through life, we learn about these different rules. Now, the interesting thing is we also create our own rules. We create rules for how things should be. So let's say, for example, you decide that you're afraid of spiders. You essentially came up with a rule that said, I am afraid of spiders. And then you gave that rule fuel. You said, well, I don't want to see a spider. Okay, because I'm afraid of them. Well, why are you afraid of them? Well, you gave another rule. Well, a spider will bite me. Okay, well, do all spiders bite you? No, the answer is no. Well, if that spider bit you, would it hurt? Probably, maybe over time, like a mosquito bite, but it probably wouldn't hurt instantly. Uh, maybe some do, right? But not very many. And would I die from a spider bite? Well, there are actually, I think in America, I think there's only three or five. I, I haven't looked that stat up in a while. You can Google it, I'm sure. But I think there are only three or three to five spiders in all of America that could actually poison you. Now, as far as kill you, uh, I, maybe it's like three or something. And in most areas, those spiders don't exist. So you should look and see where you're at. But in most instances, spiders are not harmful. They have been given creepy uh, vibes, right? It's sort of like uh, bats have been made to be scary. Well, ultimately, they're not vampires, right? And so why did bats end up being scary? Well, they had rabies. Well, dogs had rabies at one point too until we took care of that. But most bats are not that way. And so there are things that we made up rules about and we uh, decided, hey, you know what? This is scary, and so I'm going to have a rule that that is scary. And oftentimes, it's about preservation of life. Well, so you go, well, spiders are scary, and I don't want to be bit by a spider because I might die. But then you think about it, and you go, well, okay, a spider's teeny, and you could probably step on it. Some people go, oh, I don't like how it crunches when I step on it. Oh, it's gross. Okay, but you'd rather be afraid of it. So we create these rules. And in many instances, we create some really interesting rules. And in my career of helping people and working with people to overcome phobias and overcome things that they're afraid of and, and, uh, and deal with it, what I find is that people have made up some very, very interesting rules. Well, if this happens, then I have to do this. If this happens, I have to do that. And so we come up with very interesting rules. And you know, there's, there's just millions of rules that you have. And so what I want to challenge you to think about today is what rules do you have that serve you and what rules do you have that don't serve you and think about it for a second in fact if you can think about some of the rules that you have that don't serve you you're going to be one step closer to understanding how to actually deal with those rules because most of the time humans are doing things that are great for them Humans are doing things that work perfectly for them, for their situation, for how they learn, for how they understand life. And so we typically do things that are perfect for us, for that situation. Now, that doesn't mean they ultimately are perfect, but it means that they are perfect for us and how we got to this stage from point A to point Z. And so you may have some rules that you've made up about how things should go, and as you deal with these rules and interact with these rules in terms of interacting with other people from your rules, you actually have created the world that you live in. Now, interesting thing is if you were afraid of spiders, what, what could that do for you? Well, that rule could mean that anytime you see a spider, you drop everything and run. 
okay? It could mean that you scream and, and yell and then you get somebody else to take care of it so that you don't have to. So maybe it's serving you so that you don't actually have to take care of the spider. Uh, what if you found a spider in your bed or something? Well, could, you, could that lead to all sorts of interesting things? Well, if you found a spider in your bed, but then you killed it and it was gone, does that mean there are more spiders in your bed? No, but you now believe that there possibly could be a spider in your bed. And so you actually think about that spider every time you go and get in that bed. So now all of a sudden you go, well, I'm not going to get under my covers. I'm going to sleep above my bed. Now, who would do that, right? Well, it's happened and it does happen. And so now you think, well, gosh, just because there was one spider doesn't mean there were there's always going to be a spider. doesn't mean there's spiders all the time under sheets. And if there's a spider under one sheet, does that mean there's spider under every sheet? So even if you sleep on top of the bed and you put a sheet over it, does that mean that there's possibly, you see, so the rules that we make are interesting rules. We come up with all sorts of interesting things and it governs our behaviors. Our rules govern our behaviors. And this creates values. We have value, a value system that we operate from. Now, when you're dealing with your rules, the first thing to do is to identify, as in anything, identification is always a great first step for what you're dealing with. So if you can identify some of the rules, or at least a rule, you can start to dig back in and go, okay, what other rules come from that? And determine whether that rule is serving you, excuse me, determine what that rule is serving you for, and now ask yourself, is there another way that I could actually serve that rule instead of doing this? And you might find some interesting answers, but you have interesting rules. Most phobias are because of interesting rules. Uh, okay, or all of them. And most things that we do have rules behind them. You see, I set four or five alarms every day because, not because I sleep in a lot, I actually, Rarely do. I get up off my first alarm, but I put in four other alarms because I set up a rule that said, hey, you know what? You don't want to miss, if you happen to miss that one alarm, which, which I've done before in my life, never wanted to do it again. So I set four or five so that I make sure that I get up no matter what. Just in case I miss one, I have some backups, which is pretty cool, right? So I created a rule that, hey, when I go to bed, I need to set five alarms. They're usually about five minutes apart because I'm not trying to sleep in. I'm trying to make sure that, that just in case some anomaly happens and I didn't hear that or I was extra tired, that I was going to get the next one. So I set up a rule that said that's what's going to happen. So what if you could change the rules to the game? Well, the answer is you can. So I'd like you to think about what rules could you, do you have that you could start to adjust so that you could win at this game of life? What rules are you keeping that are holding you back from winning? And whatever winning means, now I don't know what that means because it could be in school, it could be at work, it could be getting the next uh, career path that you're gonna go on. It could be uh, hitting that next funnel and making it win. What rules do you have that hold you back from being able to attain those things? Interesting thing, but what if you could change the rules to the game? Well, it's sort of like playing the game and going, well, there is also this rules. When you roll doubles, you can do this. So I'd like you to think about your rules. I hope this helps. If you know somebody that needs to hear this message, please share the podcast with them. We're on Apple, uh, iTunes, right? We're on Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, we're on YouTube. We're on Google Music or Google Podcasts. We are all over the place. So share the podcast. Let people know. And if you love this episode, let me know. Tag me um, at, um, I don't remember where it's at. Just tag me somewhere. Tag me at Magic for Life or at Michael J. Dan, Michael Johnson Dance, I think is, is the other. Maybe that's not it. Anyway, give me a tag. Let me know you love the episode. Share it with your friends. And let's help a lot of people out there. Anyway, we'll see you at the next episode. Peace out. The great Tony Robbins said, Success is 80% psychology and 20% skills. Crazy, right? 80% mindset and 20% mechanics? Yet if you're anything like me in your entrepreneurial adventure, you easily spend 100% of your time working on the mechanics. Listen, even though it's easy to get caught up in the mechanics, 
we all know we should work on our mindset. But for so long, the mindset tools that have been out there are so complicated. That's why I decided to put together the Mindset Workshop that will teach you the mindset skills you need using an easy framework that you can learn fast and use for the rest of your life. In this free, live, five-day Mindset Workshop specifically for entrepreneurs, I'll be teaching the step-by-step process to identify your core challenge that's holding you back from achieving your next big goal. Check it out at marketingyourmind.com.